So in this lesson, we're gonna look at the different stages of meiosis, and we're also gonna look at how meiosis results in genetic variation. Then we'll go on to look at what chromosome mutations are and how they're illustrated uh, by translocations. And we'll look at some examples of polysomy and monosomy uh, mutations. So you've already learned about mitosis, but there's actually a second type of cell division, which is called meiosis. This diagram summarizes the main differences between the two types of division. They both start with the same type of cell look, a 2N cell, a diploid cell, which has two copies of every chromosome. In mitosis, you get two genetically identical daughter cells, exact copies of that parent cell. But in meiosis, look, we get four haploid cells, which means they have only one copy of each chromosome in them, uh, or a 1N cell. Now we call these types of cells with only half the, uh, the numbers of chromosomes in them, gametes. So what are gametes exactly? Well, in asexual reproduction, organisms reproduce really quickly, it's rapid reproduction, but it doesn't create any variation because asexual reproduction is just one parent uh, genetically copying itself to make its offspring. For species to survive in, uh, when there's environmental changes um, and so they're not so vulnerable, we need to do sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction involves a cell from a male and a cell from a female combining in the process of fertilization. Now, if both these cells were diploid cells, if they both had, for example, in humans, a diploid cell has 46 chromosomes, when they combined, they would form a new cell with 92, which is too many chromosomes. So we're gonna to need to make sure our gametes that fuse in sexual reproduction have half the numbers of chromosomes in them, okay? So we want them to be these haploid cells. These gametes are all genetically individual, and when combined, you get a great new combination of genes which gives you this varied offspring. To make these gametes, we need to do the type of cell division called meiosis. Now, gametes are produced in the sex organs of plants and animals. In plants, the male sex organ is the anthers and they produce pollen, and in uh, the female sex organ are the ovaries and they produce ova in the ovules. In animals, uh, it is testes in the male producing the sperm and ovaries in the female producing the ova, the eggs. Uh, male uh, gametes tend to be produced in larger numbers and uh, are more mobile. They tend to do the traveling to get to the female gametes. So you'll see that meiosis is very similar to mitosis in lots of ways, but there are gonna be five things that we're gonna be drawing attention to throughout this lesson, which are different. First of all, the cell divides twice, not once. Secondly, as already mentioned, you produce four haploid cells, not two diploid. Thirdly, chromosomes line up in what we call homologous pairs, not in individual, uh, an individual line. And fourthly, independent assortment happens, and I'll explain what that is, along with another important process that increases variation, which is called crossing over. Now in Moses, we use the same names for the phases, but because there's two divisions, each phase happens twice. So prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase one, and prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase two. Before we go through these stages, it's important to realize something about the, the human cell, which has 46 chromosomes in, okay? There are 46 chromosomes, but we can ar arrange them in 23 pairs, okay? Because again, our cells were fused from our parents, original sperm and original egg, and they had 23 of each in, and they fused to make 46. Now we can arrange those 46 we've got now into the 23 from the mum and the 23 from the dad, maternal and paternal chromosomes. So we've actually got 23 pairs of chromosomes, and we call these pairs homologous. They are homologous chromosomes. In the first division of meiosis, one of each of these pairs needs to end up in each of the daughter cells, so that the daughter cells have 23 chromosomes in. But remember, again, we then divide those two cells further uh, in the second division to make four cells, and if we had 23 in each and then divide that again, then we, again, we're not gonna have enough DNA. So just like we had to do with mitosis, where we had to copy all the DNA first in interphase, we have to do the same thing in meiosis as well and copy all the DNA in interphase to make 
double chromatids. Okay, so we've got these replicated chromosomes, these double chromatids. So let's go through the, the, the phases. So prophase one, now it starts off exactly the same as mitosis. Centrioles go to opposite poles. Nucleolus and nuclear envelope breaks down. Uh, the sister chromatids are clearly seen and clearly visible now that the, the DNA has fully condensed. But this is where the first important uh, difference happens. Uh, at this point, the chromosomes start to come together in their homologous pairs, okay? So this replicated chromosome from the mother and the replicated chromosome from the father, they will come together. Chromosome one will match up with chromosome one, two with two, three with three, to form these 23 pairs. And a very important uh, process happens called crossing over. Now crossing over is when homologous chromosomes swap parts of their chromosomes chiasmata form where the chromosomes break and then rejoin. Now this adds genetic variation. They're swapping the same genes but different alleles of those genes. So they might be swapping the gene for hair color between the mother's and the father's chromosome, um, but one may have brown, one may have blonde, and they're gonna swap them over. And this just adds further variation because those chromosomes are gonna split off and form gametes uh, later on, and therefore we're mixing up the genes that are possible at this stage, which is really good for variation. Now in metaphase one, instead of lining up in one long line in the equator, the spindle is formed again uh, using microtubules and they attach the centromeres, but they are arranging themselves in pairs now, in these homologous pairs down the metaphase plate. And those pairs could be arranged in either way round. In my diagram you see I've got the reds on one side and the blues on the other. But actually each pair could be either way round. Okay, and this creates a, a huge uh, number of options for how the chromosomes can uh, arrange themselves. We call this independent assortment. Each pair can orientate themselves differently. They're independent of each other. Okay, and this creates, like I said, millions of options as to how the chromosomes may end up when we go further down the division uh, process in meiosis and what we can end up with in the gametes. Now in anaphase, uh, one of each pair of double chromatids gets pulled to opposite poles. So we're not splitting the centromeres at this point. One whole pair from each, uh, go, uh, each homologous uh, pair goes to each side, okay? One of each of those pair go to each side of the cell. And again, that's done by contracting the microtubules. Telophase happens where again, we form the nucleolus and the nuclear envelopes and we get cytokinesis, and that's the end of meiosis one, and we move into meiosis two. Now meiosis two, the second division, is basically exactly the same as mitosis, okay? We're just doing it with 23 chromosomes instead of 46 in each of the two cells. So uh, the same thing happens in prophase two. Uh, we've got the nuclear envelopes dissolving, the nucleus dissolving, the spindle, the um, centrioles going to opposite poles. Metaphase two, the uh, chromatids line up in one long line down the middle of each cell. The centromeres then get split in anaphase two and the chromosomes get pulled to the opposite uh, sides. And then telophase two, we get the nuclear envelopes back, we get the uh, nucleo nucleoli back and we end up with these four haploid nuclei, okay? Then we've got to do cytokinesis again to get our full four haploid cells at the end. So chromosome mutations. Now sometimes during this process of meiosis, the manipulation of the chromosomes can cause major mutations. And translocation is one example of this. And this is when a whole section of a chromosome just breaks off and joins to another completely different chromosome. Now these are much more serious than just individual gene point mutations. Another problem that can occur during meiosis is something called non-disjunction. This is when chromosomes do not pull apart properly in anaphase. So normally in anaphase two, you want that centromere to split and one chromosome, or, you know, each of the sister chromatids to go to each side, but it doesn't happen like that. Sometimes two can go to one side and, and, and none to the other side. Okay, and this is what we call aneuploidy. Now, when you've got one too many, uh, so you'd get two going to one side and then the zygote forms with another one, that will end up with three, that's called polysomy. And if none went to one of the gametes, and then when that fuses with the other gamete, it will just have one in it, um, then that's called monosomy. 
Down syndrome is an example of polysomy where you end up with three copies of chromosome 21, which affects mental and physical development. Life expectancy is reduced, but most people live to middle age. Uh, Turner syndrome is an example of monosomy, and this actually affects the sex chromosomes. Normally, you have an X and a Y if you're a boy, and an X and an X if, if you're a girl. But in Turner syndrome, the sperm um, doesn't pass anything on at all, okay? Um, and therefore, it's only determined by the X chromosome from the, uh, the mum. So it, uh, the offspring is X, what we call XO. Uh, they will be female, but they will uh, not go through puberty and they will be infertile.